So if any of you guys have showed poultry um, in the state of Indiana, you are often required to have a blood test before you take them to the show. And this is what they are testing for, the Florian disease and foul typhoid. It is diff two different diseases that they can get from wild bird carriers. So the Pylorium disease is, um, they contract it from the bacterium Salmonella pylorium, and that's where it gets its name. It affects mainly young chicks, and, but it can affect older birds. Um, normally when they get one, they get the other. It's usually they carry both at the same time. And then foul typhoid usually affects mature birds, and it's by Salmonella gallinarium and it affects mostly the older birds and of all kinds. And then, so different clinical signs. With mature birds, it's they decrease in um, egg production and they have poor hatchability of their eggs. And then young, they have labored breathing and a higher mortality rate in the incubator and within two weeks of life. And then a lot of them have the same different clinical signs, anorexia, depression, diarrhea, and high fever. And then, so different transmission. Most ways of this disease can be transmitted is through contact with infected birds. Um, if hens have it, they can pass it to their chicks through eggs. And then contaminated feed and bedding or water. So if you have them in an area where they're being shown, so there's in a barn together, if a bird sticks its head through and eats the food of an infected bird, they can transmit it that way. Um, and then from humans, from lack of biosecurity, and if they get, are in contact with an infected bird, they can pass it on to another bird. Okay. And then so diagnostics and treatment, it's diagnosed through a blood test or a tissue sample um, if you need to for a necropsy. And then there are no treatments for this, so normally the birds are ended up getting cold if they have anything like this. And it's also highly contagious. So if you end up having either of these, then you have to get your entire flock tested and you will be under quarantine. Um, so mainly the best way to do this is to protect the flocks from getting in any contact. So you're going to want control over the access of the houses. You're not going to want wild birds flying in and out. Um, you're not going to want your ducks sharing the same pond as wild ducks sort of thing and you're gonna to wanna to keep feeders clean and water is clean, and you're just gonna to wanna to maintain high sanitation standards. And I think that's it. Any questions? Okay, questions? So is it transmitted through feces, saliva, remnants of eggs? How's it transmitted exactly? Not exactly sure, I didn't look that up. Um, I'm assuming that it's probably fecal. Um, that's probably the easiest way that it gets transmitted transmitted and then from hens to chick that would be like blood barrier sort of thing. And you said through the eggs too, right? I mean the chick can get it? Yes, the chick can get it through. It's hatched. Okay, how about, um, you said something about you can do a blood sample or a tissue sample. I know the tissue would be a necropsy. Mm -hmm. What, how do you take a blood sample from a chicken? Are you, where do they get that from? In case somebody doesn't know, you know, where do you take a blood sample from a chicken? That's what I'm asking. Okay, so you take the blood sample from the wing. Wing vein. Yes, from the wing vein. Um, if you lay the bird on your back and you splay one of the wings open, it's very prominent. And how they do it, it's just a little prick with a needle kind of sort of thing. It's a weird metal prong that has a sharp end and then it has like a circle line where you can collect the blood. So you prick it and then when it starts to bleed, you um, collect it on the little loop. And then they have a dropper of the... Um, I guess you just kind of test it, and if it um, coagulates, it's a purple liquid, if it coagulates, then that's a positive result. Um, so you take the dropper and you mix it in with a little drop of the liquid, and that's your positive or negative test. So you do it right there by the You bird. do it right there. We, for our county, we have like three weeks beforehand of actual showing. You have to bring all of your birds in to get blood lead. Okay. Um, you can actually come down to Purdue. Purdue has um, different like seminars where you can get um, like licensed to yeah. do the bloodletting for mm -hmm. different places in Indiana. Yeah, because I think I had a student a couple of years ago that went around and did that mm -hmm. to flocks. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else know where else you can take a blood sample from a chicken? And do you know? 
Is it jugular? I no. no, no. Idea. Or is it the foot? No, this is might sound foot? cruel, and I don't know. I've done it, but it was so long ago. They may not do it anymore, but it's heart puncture. That's when you are euthanizing. No, uh, that's actually a live bird. Anybody heard that? I've, no, I've only done that with people like. Yeah, yeah, I've only done it with See, I don't know if, they, if that's kind of like frowned upon now, but this was <laughs> taught to me by poultry people, okay? But you would do a heart puncture with a needle in a syringe and you would take blood out of the heart. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for Patricia Hester's two years ago, okay. and so we did a, diff a bunch of different, um, like I worked in the lab and we did blood blooding and stuff like that, and um, they had a seminar where they taught once you do the heart puncture, the birds end up being euthanized. Okay. Like you do that while they're live, they okay. are just under heavy and then sedation they send them. and then yeah. they're euthanized. Okay.